Maya Moore. It was actually my favorite um, Minnesota link. Um, I'm I'm just shocked. I knew that you were retiring to work with prison. I thought reform. However, I didn't think that you would marry someone that had been in prison that long. Um, y'all, I don't give. I I, yeah. I want to know who's Maya Moore's parents. And what kind of drug did they give her? This man ain't seen freedom in 20 some years and you let him get out right away, you marry him? I don't think that's a good move, baby. I just don't. Well, let's move on from that because that's too crazy. Before I get up on another road, good morning, good afternoon, family. Um, I'm going to really back in because my goal is to keep us fighting, yet steadfast, yet hot, not lukewarm, and... um. Also making sure that we have the right, you know, mindset. Because I think it's Proverbs 18 and 21. It says, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So sometimes I need to back up, slow it down, and understand I don't want my wrath or my anger to put something out on the internet that, um, you know, somebody that's weak-minded might take it in a whole different way, okay? Because um, the goal here is to stay alive, and the goal here is to also fight constructively, okay? But we have to understand that the biggest fight that you have is with yourself. And once that's, you know, when a person is elite or when a person hasn't, had a chance to even deal with their issues, they project everything onto everybody else. You know, like Donald Trump, they just project everything because he can't even begin to deal with what he feels. He, he can't do it. Okay? Because with that comes a certain amount of shame, a certain amount of responsibility, a certain amount of correction. Right? So, uh, you know, Lisa Moreno... Um, is somebody that I always shout out. I always say she kind of like my sister from another mother. I'm over there in Queens. Um, and I thought that I'm going to share this because I felt that it was real powerful. And I, and, and it's very important for us to stay right on our, 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 um, self. And keep this mantra as you go along your day when you start to experience that shame or that um, feeling where you could have did something different. Um, especially if you have children or you've done something, you whipped your kid's ass and you know you went overboard. All those things. Um, she did a powerful, I guess, little email she sent today. And it said, uh, it says when you, she said, when you experience shame, but, I'm not, but if you are a healthy person, you have a you have a conscious, and this aspect of your personality can help you curb behaviors that are not in alignment with your personal value system. When your conscious helps you recognize how screaming at your kids hurt their souls, upon reflection, the pain you feel when considering how your children feel can assist you as you reach a more patience. In the future. This has worked for me. <laughs> Tremendously. I'm sorry. Let's keep going. 
In the future, when you ex exercise more patience with your children, you experience a boost in your personal morale. If you feel better about yourself and your children, then they will feel better about you too and feel better about themselves as well. Okay? Now, when our conscience operates without shame spirals, we experience personal, emotional, spiritual, and even mental growth. When we are humble enough to listen to our conscience, then we can change the course of our lives and overcome just about any obstacle that is thrown in our way. Say that again. When our conscience operates without shame spirals, we experience personal, emotional, spiritual, and even mental growth. When we are humble and humble enough to listen to our conscience, then we can change the course of our lives and overcome just about any obstacle that is thrown our way. But what happens when shame takes over the voice of our conscience and we are then we get paralyzed by fear and guilt and a tremendous amount of self-doubt. That's what happens. We get overcome with it once you know that feeling comes in your stomach where you're like, oh I get that. Oh, I did. Oh, and I'm ashamed about it, or whatever. So, I mean, you can't let shame hijack your conscience. Healthy people have a conscience. This is an aspect of our super ego that sends our ego information about what one considers just right, moral, and good. If you have been shamed in childhood. It is not uncommon to have shame override the voice of your conscience. And when this happens, it's possible to become de de debilitated by anxiety brought on to you through shame. You know, sometimes parents shame their children into submission. Listen to this. Thank you so much, Lisa, for this. you always on point. Some parents sometimes shame their children into submission. Even when most intended parents find themselves shaming their children for all sorts of reasons. When parents use shame to manipulate their children's emotion, the ever-learning superego is taking on all the information and is being downloaded. Like a computer, remember that. And it is quite possible to feel shame simply for having a need of any kind. Large or small, you don't feel shame, especially if your parent told you, "Oh, you just selfish. You selfish." As an adult, as the conscience continues to direct the ego to act in a moral and just ways, um, that's according to the downloaded rules received in childhood. Shame can arrest the mind, the body, and the soul. I get it, Val. On my own journey, I had to come face to face with shame in order to allow myself with my conscience rather than allow shame to keep me stuck. Shame felt like a huge boulder that fueled my codependency. The more shame I felt, the more I subsequently believed I deserved to be treated poorly. Shame prevented me from altering behaviors that needed to be changed. Finally, when I am when 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 I felt uh, finally embraced by my shame and made peace with what I was shame about. So in other words, made peace with it, it was then that I was able to allow my conscience to do his job. And uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about here. 
When you have never known unconditional love or forgiveness, you do not know how to maturely handle your conscience when it tugs on your sleeve and says, mm, that's not you. Uh, you. You could have done better. So remember that. I just want you to remember that. Especially y'all that got kids in your house. No, no, sister, you having these babies and you not can't put nothing emotional inside of them to make them stronger, to make them better, to make them less traumatized. They don't need it from us. Our job is to protect their narrative. And um, because you know, depending on how you've been socialized, there'll be a lot of challenges waiting on you. So, you know, I think it's important. You know, I, I like I said, I got this from Lisa Morano today, and she. Lastly, she says it won't be easy, but you can do it. The world is full of people who lie and try to pretend that they are happier and healthier than they actually are. This might be because our culture is obsessed with illusions. It's just obsessed with it. We think that if people think that we are happy, then we are worthy. And all this does is fuel the unhappiness in the world. Okay, you guys, I'm back. Anyway, um, let me let me go back here. Uh, Lisa goes on to say, uh, the world is full of people who lie and try to pretend that they are happier and healthier than they actually are. I want y'all to hear this really good because it just resonated with my spirit. And I, again, I thank you, sister. Um, this might be because of our culture is obsessed with illusion. Now think about this. We think that if people think that they are happy, then we are worthy. Then, then, then we are worthy. And all this does is fuel the unhappiness in the world. When I finally stopped pretending that I was okay, and I allowed myself to understand where shame was coming from, I let go of needing to be the illusion of others that they wanted me to be. I finally stopped and I accepted that I had been shamed as a child. And I began to understand that my inner child, it was then that I was learning to repair and reparent myself in an unconditional, loving, different way. No, I'm still learning. Personally. Uh, when I began to forgive my mistakes, and my ego blunders, that is when my self-esteem began to rise because I no longer felt like a circus pony whose job it was to keep others feeling good about themselves. While I imploded a little more each and every day. When I began to accept that people were going to walk away because I refused to continue to be their source of narcissistic supply, and I acknowledged that it was my responsibility to rely on myself and not others for acceptance, it was then that the shame had less control over me. When I listened to my conscience rather than recall from shame, I found myself more humble, grateful, accountable, and patient with myself, which in turn made me the same way with others. Are y'all hearing this, sister? It is easy to love others because we don't know all of their flaws like we know our own. How about that? Smoke a bag of that. Okay. Wow. Y'all tell me what y'all think about that. That's what my sister Lisa Moreno talks about when she talks about um, shame. 
Can anybody relate? Can you identify? Think it's right? You think we have a responsibility to heal ourselves individually first before we can think about sweeping around anywhere else? I don't know. Let me know. Leave your comment below. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'm going to see you in the next video.